Hello, everyone. So I got a few uh, articles to touch on today. Uh, so a lot of GM news and a piece on Tesla. I'll cover for you this morning. So let's have a look. So we got an article here from CBC News, and I've been hearing a lot about this uh, in the community. GM is going to discontinue the Chevy Bolt later this year. General Motors Co. said Tuesday it will end production of its Chevy Bolt electric vehicle later this year as it shifts from as it shifts zero emission production to trucks and SUVs built on a new battery platform. GM has been using the pack type of batteries for this for the Chevy Bolt which is known as prismatic. So I think they want to get rid of uh, this older battery style. And also, as we know, the Chevy Bolt unfortunately had a massive issue with the battery fires and halted production for quite some time. So I think the Chevy Bolt is kind of tarnished and I think that may have played a role in why they want to stop producing it. The Chevy Bolt's produced in Orion Township in Michigan they do plan to continue to make EVs there, but I think it'll be shut down for some time. Mary Barra said when the Orion reopens in 2024 and reaches full production, employment will nearly triple. So it sounds like in the short term, they're going to be some job cuts at this uh, Chevy Bolt assembly plant. And the Chevy Bolt, it was their highest selling electric vehicle. The largest U.S. automaker sold 38,120 Bolt EVs in 2022, up from 24,828 in 2011, 19,700 in the first three months of this year. The Bolt, GM's first mass market EV, still accounts for more than 90% of all U.S. GM EV sales. So a pretty interesting move here from GM to axe the Chevy Bolt. It was... It was born out of the Chevy Volt with a V, which was a hybrid and, and did pretty well for GM. But the transition to full battery electric vehicle was a tough one with the recall I just mentioned. And it'll be interesting to see where they go for their next. This was a, an affordable vehicle from GM that got a lot of people into the electric vehicle space for their first time. Unfortunately, there was a lot of uh, bad experiences with it. And like I said, I think that's why I think that played a role in them discontinuing the Chevy Bolt. Also on the topic of GM, their autonomous driving division, Cruise, their robo taxis now will run all day in San Francisco. Previously, they were only during the day, but now it's going to be 24-7 in the city of San Francisco. So this is GM's push into autonomous driving, which uses a very different uh, tactic than what G, uh, what uh, Tesla is using. Tesla uh, has a vision-based approach and is trying to get a generalized solution that'll work anywhere, whereas Cruise uses LiDAR and is taking a different approach where it only works in a geofenced area right now. This is only working in San Francisco. So how that can be expanded beyond San Francisco is questionable. Also, we got GM partnering with Samsung to invest more than $3 billion to build joint EV battery plant in the U.S. GM, Samsung, SDI to invest over $3 billion to build joint EV battery plant in the U.S. The joint venture plant to start production in 2026 aims to have annual production capacity of 30 gigawatt hours. Location of the plant is not announced. So GM making more moves towards electric vehicles, but seem to be struggling as they have canceled the Chevy Bolt. And I would say that a joint venture is not gonna be as profitable as what Tesla is doing, where it's more vertically integrated. But Tesla did partner with Panasonic initially, so I guess you have to start somewhere. But hopefully GM survives until 2026 when this plant aims to start and we got a little more supercharger network news article from electric here headline is tesla starts to open supercharger network to non-tesla electric cars in china so this is pretty widespread around the world now tesla opening up the superchargers to non-tesla electric vehicles and this could be a source of some revenue 
and profit for Tesla. So we'll, we'll have to watch this going forward. You know, we saw the other day that they were offering Model S and X owners with free supercharging, uh, some incentives to get rid of the free supercharging for life. I think the free supercharging for life, unfortunately they saw people were abusing the, when it's free, you know, there's no incentive to go anywhere else to, you know, if you go home, you gotta pay, but you can get it for free at the supercharger. So unfortunately people take advantage and that's why I think Tesla realized, you know, it, it doesn't work the best. You, you gotta have at least some cost for uh, access to the superchargers. Even even selling selling the electricity at cost is better than giving it for free to reduce abuse of the of the system, which I think is fair. So that's it for this morning. My name is Evan Bertrand. This is the Evergreen Channel. Subscribe if you like by clicking on the wheel. And thanks for watching.